this night. I just want to be very grateful this night for God to give us this opportunity to have an opportunity to speak, to have an opportunity to be together tonight, to speak on something that is very much important. I am sorry I did not manage to do as I promised on Wednesday because of a few things, but I know God is going to sort me out or he's going to sort us out. So this evening I'm very much grateful. I'm very much oh, just expecting so much from God to speak to us, expecting too much also for God to do us a favor, to have an opportunity to speak to us because it's a, an opportunity to hear from God tonight. It is an opportunity to just listen to what God is saying tonight because I know God is going to do great things. I want us to pray first. Our dear and heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to honor you. I just want to magnify your name, Jesus. Because you're the King of glory. Because you're the Lord of honor. Because you're the first and the last. Because you're the beginning and the end. We just want to honor you. I just want to magnify your name, Jesus. Because of this evening that you have decided to speak to us. I pray the Lord, let your Holy Spirit give me revelation. Give me utterance. Give me wisdom. And also give me knowledge so that lord we may get exactly from you i know that lord the topic that i'm speaking about tonight is a topic that is very controversial that needs your wisdom that needs your knowledge that needs your guidance that needs your blessings because it is you that is going to provide let your holy spirit guide me let your holy spirit teach me let your holy spirit reveal to the viewer and the listener, what you want them to hear tonight. Lord, I just want to worship you and I just want to honor you because of the listener and the viewer tonight. And I pray for your divine grace to move upon their life and also to bless them. All this I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Thank you. So my viewer, this night, uh, just don't want to take some time, a lot of time. Because what we are going to learn is, I know it is a vast topic, but I want to take this opportunity just to present this to you, that your wisdom is going to come and your wisdom is going to flow into our lives, that your grace is going to be with me. And also your Holy Spirit is going to just give us an opportunity to speak and also to understand. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus of Nazareth. All this I say. I want to also remind you that um, I am Stephen Odwar, and uh, the platform that I'm talking to you through is DSI, that is Divine Seekers International. And I'm grateful to have an opportunity because we've been talking about something called growth and as i spoke i told you that dsi the main purpose of dsi is to develop transformational leaders that have leaders that life a transformational life becomes automatically a transformational leader so that is one thing that i want you to understand we have been talking about growth per se and we realize that growth is movement from one from lower to higher, from no to something, from lack of intelligence to intelligence. So we have been learning about growth and we began with the spiritual growth. We went to financial growth and today also we are continuing financial growth. And I know this is part 4B, which is talking about financial growth. It is part 4B. There was part 4A. And there is, I want to talk, it is part 4B. 
We talked about in growth, we have talked about growth, the first part one, we talked about growth. Part two, we talked about why grow. Part three, we began uh, about spiritual growth. Then part four, A, we talked about financial growth, which I've realized is so vast. But I want us to move today, to move to another level. And uh, before we speak, I want you to understand these verses because it's going to help you. Like a partridge, getting eggs together but not producing young is a man who gets wealth but not by rights. Be before half his days are ended, it will go from him. And at this end, he will be foolish. So as like a partridge, getting eggs together but not producing the young. It is like the Bible is talking about like a partridge. So is a man who is like a man who gets wealth, but not by right, which means there's wealth by right, but there's wealth which is not by right. So this is saying that before half his days are ended, it will go from him. So one thing is if you get wealth which is not by right, it will be a problem. Uh, Proverbs 7, 13, verse 11, the Bible says, wealth is wealth quickly got will become less. Wealth quickly got will become less. But he who gets a store by the works of his hand will have it increased. So I'm just giving you that there is a way when I'm talking about financial growth, I know people think that it is an opportunity whereby you can swindle people, you can, you, you can con people just but the Bible is very clear on this. So when you look at Proverbs 28, verse number 20, and verse number 22, verse number 20, the Bible says, A man of good faith will have great blessings, but one attempting to get wealth quickly will not go free from punishment. So will not go free from punishment. One, But one attempting to get wealth quickly will not go free from punishment. So verse number 22, he who is, that is Proverbs 28, verse number 22, he who is ever desiring well goes running after money and does not see that need will come on him. That need, we and does not see that need will come on him. So when you are looking at this, James chapter number 5, verse 3 to verse 5, verse number 3, the Bible says, your gold and your silver are wasted. And their, their waste will be a witness against you, burning into your flesh. You have put your, you have put by your store in the last days. Verse number four. See, the money which you, false, you, with, you falsely kept back from the workers cutting the grass in your field is crying out against you. And the cries of those who took in your grain have come to the ears of the Lord of armies. Verse number five, you have been living delicately on earth and have taken your pleasure. You have made your hearts fat for a day of destruction. When we look at all these verses, it is telling us that there is wealth, yes, but ill-gotten ones, there is wealth that when probably you are, you are, suppressing somebody so that you may be wealthy that is another problem but there is wealth gotten by right and wealth gotten not by right which means there is a process where you can get wealth by right and there is a process that you cannot get wealth by right so when you are looking at these processes it's going to tell you exactly that wealth there is wealth there is rich there is prosperity there is everything but they have to be by rights. So when you read these verses, I wanted to get us in a clear picture that we are not going to be hasty for wealth. We are not going to be hasty to get rich. We are not going to be hasty. Bishop Olumide Emmanuel spoke something. He said that when we look at prosperity without purpose, that is creating greed. When we look at money without mission, those are what is causing, causing greed. Money without a mission is greed. Prosperity without purpose, greed. Which means you must have a purpose. So tonight, 
I want us to move to the next level. And we talked about this last week, that money is a standard of dimension, a fixed account, money is a measure of value, money is a store of value. And we realized that where is money coming from? Money is with the people, which means money is with the people. If you live in an island, you will never receive money, probably. Problems, money is in problems. Money is in con product and services, which means when you produce something to cater for the needs of the people, you are going to get money. When you have a product somewhere that is going to solve some people's problem, you're going to get money. When you, when you solve other people's problem, you're going to get money. When you have gifts and your talents are going to give you money. When your ideas are going to give you money, work is going to give you money. So all this, we are working with ideas. Ideas have controlled the world. Uh, Reverend uh, Sam Ademi of, uh, of, 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 is called, uh, of, of Nigeria has written a book which says ideas rule the world. Please take that and read it ideas rule the world, which means ideas are money. So when you look at this, it is a very powerful thing that if you want money, look at these six things. If you want money, people are having money, problems, that is money, product, services, those are money, gifts, talent, those are money, ideas, those are money, and work, that is money. So when we go to the next, how to grow financially, and I spoke about this, have value, number one, work, number two, give, number three, save, number four, invest, number five, then serve, serve, serve. But the last one, number six, is always mostly talking about number one, number two, and number three. Serve is mostly talking about value and work value and work, but it is something that I think is also worth looking at as, as, an, as an identity, as one, as a, as a title of his own. So I want us to begin. Number one, have value. Have value. We are talking about how to increase because that is how to grow financially. And when we are talking about how to grow financially, this is one thing that we are looking at. Number one, have a value. Have a value. What is value? Which is worth? Value is the worth of something. Talent, knowledge, service, goods. What is worth? Equivalent in value to the sum or an item specified. The level at which someone deserves to be valued or rated. So when we are talking about the issue of have value, which means you must be having how to evaluate. You must be equivalent to something. I was talking to some young people and I was asking them, if a company called you today and want you to serve them, and these companies know that they don't have money, they have money, but they want you to serve them, and they want you, and they ask you, how much, if we are going to pay you per, per, per hour, how much are you going to be equivalent? How much are you going, how much do you need from us when you are going to work for us for one hour? If you're doing, doing a consultation to another team or a, a person, how much can you get per hour? How much would you request per hour? Which means that is the sum value, the rate at which you are going to exchange the service per hour. There was a day, I think we were talking, I was, we were in a platform and then I, I was looking at the people that the, it's called Forbes was rating people per minute. And Forbes was trying to rate people, the most influential people per minute. And they were talking about an individual, somebody who is paid the worth of this person per minute is 5,500 US dollars. 5,500 US dollars. So, and somebody is coming at 125 US dollars per minute. But I was looking at myself and I was saying, how did this person how did this person rate? So one thing is you must evaluate yourself and know what is your value per minute, what is your value per hour, what is your value, so that you may know that if I am not, if I am gossiping, how many, how much time do I gossip? Which means how much time have I invested in gossip? If I go gossip for two hours, 
how much time have I wasted? If I do nothing for five hours, how much gossip do I? If I sleep for 24 hours or 10 hours, how much time have I wasted? Which means you must know your value. You must know how, you must know your worth. And that is why something is very much important. And I want us to look at the value in two, two aspects. Number one, value in terms of competence. What is competence? Competence, this is the quality of being adequately qualified physically and intellectually. Adequately qualified physically and intellectually, which means you are competent. Value means you are competent. Well, nowadays, when organizations are hiring people, they look at the qualification. What is qualification? Which means the requirement for somebody to accomplish a certain task which means this is a qualified person. You are qualified, which means you have met the requirement. So this nowadays, and this is one thing that people use to compare, that competence, are you competent? Uh, so nowadays, it is the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. I like Samadhemi because he said something, that if you get a qualified person, who is qualified, but the, the, which means this person is competent. He will do the work very well. But number two comes what we call character. Character, this is the sum of quality by which a person is distinguished from others. The mental and the moral qualities, moral. And this is when I was reading a book by Sam Ademi and he said very clearly, if you hire a qualified person and he's, mo he's morally unqualified, and I want to give you an example. If you hire an accountant, you have two accountants. One is charging probably per month, he wants only 60,000, and another one wants 100,000. So the one who wants 60,000 is a thief, which means he, is a, he has a moral decay. This person can steal. But at the end of the month, you don't know how much he has stolen because he's an accountant, but a thief. So then you, the other one is a person who is not a thief, honest, trustworthy. And then he wants 100. So which one are you going to go for? Is it the 70 or the 100? Why? And this is one thing that we have to understand. The value of a person is also in competence and also in character. It is in moral and in also intellectual. So which means this person must be intellectually competent and also morally competent. So which means that they are, these two create the value. You have a degree, but you're a thief. You have a master's degree, but you're a thief. And there is another person who is very honest, but does not have qualification. You give him accounting to handle, he will mess everything. This person does, know how, does not know how to work on accounting, does not know, which means a person who is not competent intellectually, but probably morally is good. The, when we are talking about work, we have, to, we have to work with these two things, competence and character. This has happened mostly in the Christian world. People who are born again, they don't look at competence. They mostly focus on, on character. I am born again, but if you give him accounting to handle, he will do nothing. And that is why you find that a lot of Christianity nowadays is ranked below because people have not gone for intellectual. People are not intellectually competent. People, a Christian who can, say, who can, can speak in tongues, but does not handle, that cannot speak, cannot write anything in English. And this is where the challenge is happening because people, think that when you move to another level, when you have intellectual, and I just like the way the Bible is very clear, but I think we are going to learn much about this in the next step. So when one thing for you, please sit down and look at your value. Competent, are you competent within the marketplace? Is your character okay? And those are things that people need to, so when we're looking at competence, I want us to look at the gift and talents. Do you have gifts and talents? Because there are people who are gifted. 
Do you know your gift or talent? Have you sharpened your gift professionally? Number two, skills. Do you have knowledge? Have you skills in anything? In any way, do you have skills? The Bible says in the Facts Chronicles, when you look at there are people who are skilled in doing things. Skilled. The person who wrote the first five books, that is Moses, this guy was skilled. This guy was competent, which means he went to schools in the Egyptians. And the people who have written, the, the Bible records people who have been intellectual, people who have been competent. They can do anything. People like, people like Daniel. Daniel could run the whole of, uh, the whole of Babylon. Joseph could run the whole of Egypt. He was born again, but he could run the whole of Egypt. But right now, if you can get a Christian who is born again and tell him you want you to be an MCA, mismanagement, because they don't know. Competence is a problem. So competence is necessary, which means you are competent in the marketplace. You can handle something very well. You can have, you can lead, you can guide, you can teach. So that is experiences. This is also part of competence. Do you have experiences? Job 12, if you're going and read these verses, because of time, I won't read. So character is also part of competence. Beliefs. Believe there are people who believe in nothing. There are people who just believe that they can steal at it. What is somebody's philosophy? What is some, the philosophy of somebody to steal? They are kleptomaniacs. They cannot. Be. So those are things that faithfulness, faithfulness. Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to verse 12, if I think I need to talk about this. Jesus said, if you are not going to be faithful in the little, you cannot give a beginner much. If you cannot be faithful in what belongs to another person, you should not be given yours. If you cannot be give, you cannot be faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Please, I want this. Please, this is mostly for the church. If the church cannot handle money, who, who, the Bible says, if you cannot handle and you cannot, if you are not faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who shall who is going to give you true riches? Which means if God, you can, have, you can be given some money and you can't handle it, who can give you true riches? So these are things that we need. Are you trustworthy and integrity? So do you have moral habits? So please, who, you who is listening to me, when you want to be financially growing, you must be competent in the market, marketplace, number one, because you must know how to handle money. Because you cannot be given too much that you can't handle. God will give you what you can handle. And you must grow on how to handle finances. Number two, you must have a moral character. So the next thing is number two, work. What is work? Activity which one exerts exa strength or faculty to do or to perform something. So First Thessalonians, Paul is saying, and that you study, Paul was talking to the Thessalonians. I want you to read this and hear and listen to me. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. To do your own business and to work, to do not only to do business alone and also to work. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. For every, even when we were with you, this we commanded you. That you, but if any would not work, neither should he eat. This was Paul talking to the Thessalonians because these guys were busy bodies. There were people who were working in other people's homes, and this is one some something that also most of the the, the the people who are born again sometimes they do. They work in people's houses, and they, they, Paul calls them the busy bodies. Please, Paul told the Thessalonians. To do your own business and to work with your own hands. Do your own businesses and work with your own hands. And verse number 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. Which means for even when we were with you, this we commanded you. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. So what is work? Because it is doing, performing something. You must, every person needs to work or to do business. Because this is one thing that is going to bring income to you. This is an income. Jet. Please, I know it has been a problem. I know there are people who, yes, ministry is calling. Ministry is work, I know. But before, 
what have you been doing? Let me ask you, when Jesus picked the 12 disciples, did he pick one that was just doing nothing? Every, every, every disciple of Jesus, he picked them from where they were. They were doing something. They were doing something. Somebody was, Matthew was also a tax collector, doing something. Every, every disciple of Jesus Christ was doing something. Jesus never picked any busybody. And right now, that is where the challenge has been. I have seen a lot of great pastors, uh, great bishops. You realize that this person, before he became a pastor, before he became a bishop, he was doing something. And they become great because you look at somebody, somebody, there was a pastor, they, they are great people who are some, like people like Bishop Oyedeko, he was an architect. There was a, uh, 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 there's an engineer. There the, 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 the are pastors who, they were doing something. Before they came into ministry, they were doing something. Which means God does not pick busy bodies. And that is why you find that a lot of churches that are led by people who are busy bodies, they were doing nothing before they came to ministry. And they realized, this ministry can be my business. No, God pick, pick people from doing something. He picked people from doing something. Nobody followed Jesus. And that is why even the, the people who were begging on the street, if they came, Jesus could heal them and tell them, please go back, go home, do something, do something, go home. But the people who are following him, he, the people he told, follow me, they were doing something. Jesus told the people who are following him to follow him because they were doing something. And sometimes when they reverted, they had to go back to their duties. Not they just become busybodies. And this is the problem that the church is having, is that people see ministry as an option of doing, it is, no, Jesus wants you when you are doing something. So that is one thing that I want us, please go and read these verses. Proverbs 13 verse 4, 20 verse 4, 21, 25. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 to verse 34, and Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 28, where Paul was telling the Ephesians that if you are a thief, if you are stealing from people, and you are born again now, stop stealing. Work with your hand so that you may bless others. Work with your hand so that, which means if your source was wrong, change the trajectory. Now work. Get with your own hands, and then you're going to be a blessing to other people. So one thing, work is important. Please church work is important look at all the followers of jesus all the, the disciples of jesus that became apostles before they were apostles they were doing something and god picked them god does not call people who are busy bodies god calls people who are transforming a community they are doing service to the community please do service to the community and if possible please have a business that you are running so that this business is going to stabilize. And this has frustrated a lot of pastors. Right now, like in this time of Corona, the pastors who are not doing work or who are not having business are been having problems because people now are not having an opportunity. People now are, people don't have. So you find that you're having a problem. I was seeing in the media, there was a pastor who sold the, he sold the chairs, he sold everything from the church because the church are not giving him. But if he would have opened his eyes, he would have been probably running a business somewhere. It's not that God, but this is what Paul is saying. Please, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, and that you study to be quiet, number one, and to do your own business, and to do work with your own hands. Work. So, please, uh, why, do we, why do we need to work? Because sometimes people... Uh, sometimes people think that it is something. Uh, before, I also, the next step, because I want us to look at reasons for giving. Number three is giving. Reasons for giving. What? Why do we give? Because giving makes us feel and stay healthy. Giving promotes and cooperates. Promotes cooperation and social connection. We give because we have received so freely. So that is one thing. It is an obedience. It is obedience from the Lord. We give to support others and ministry because it is also a way of receiving heavenly rewards. So wrong reasons of giving. Please, I want you to understand when you are giving, 
Don't give to impress people. Jesus said about that in the book of Matthew chapter number 6, verse 2. He said that if you give to impress people, that is a problem. And I think this has been a problem with most politicians. They, they call the press before they go to give. They tell the press, today we are going to give in such and such a place. Please come. So that it's going to be on a national TV or in a national international platform. There are people when they, they buy cameras of 40,000 to go and give a food that is worth 1,500. That is not good. Do not give to impress because Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he said, if you give to be seen, you have already received your reward. Because seeing is a reward also. So if you give to advertise, don't give to impress. Don't give in so, so that you may receive something, this something in return from the person giving you. Please, if you're helping somebody, please don't help them because you're expecting them to return the favor. No, that is not why Jesus said that we need to give. So try. So don't try to buy things from God. I think the seed, the, prosper, the prosperity gospel has destroyed a lot of people whereby every, when somebody is giving, they give because pastors told them, please give this thing, give 10,000 so that you may get a car. How much, where on earth are you going to get a car on 10,000? Please give this so that you may get it. So there is nothing that we can buy from God. No, you cannot buy anything from God. So God is not a shopkeeper. God is not a salesman, a salesperson that you give 5,000 because you want something. No, it is not that way. So please, I have decided to put this before so that you may understand. We give to make us feel ha happy and also stay healthy. It is happy. When you have helped somebody, it, it becomes happy. You will become happy when you have helped somebody. You've solved something. You've, you've brought a solution to another person. We give to promote cooperation because when you give to a person, there is social connection. And this is what is destroying the church because the church is not helping the community. And if you are a church and you are in a certain community, a pastor comes to a certain village and wants all the, 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 the community to come, but he's not exchanging anything with the community. That is a problem. Because that is, and that is why you find that the churches like uh, the Roman Catholic, they took a lot because they came and when the church, like a Roman church, when the Roman church, when they were planting a church in this community, they plant a school, they plant a, a dispensary, which means they are also connecting with the community. But the problem with the churches nowadays is when they come, they want to get members, but there is nothing that they are giving to the community. So that is one thing, connection, social connection and cooperation. We give because we have received freely. So also it is an obedience to God's word, the Bible says. So giving as the third one, because I wanted to give us the highlight so that we may. So one, giving. Giving is to grant or to bestow by formal action, to transfer from one authority to, uh, to or authority or custody. So there is two focuses of giving. Please, there are two focuses of giving. Number one is giving towards God. I want you to understand giving towards God. So when we are talking about giving towards God, God is not somewhere placed so that God is not somewhere in a certain place that he is there. So just waiting for you to receive. No, but I'm talking about focus. You are going to give to a pastor tithe. This tithe is not for the pastor. Your focus is God, but the person who is going to handle it is the pastor. So you, there is nowhere where God, there is no office that God has put so that you are going to take, there is no account, there is no bank account number that you are going to say, I've written check to heaven. No. For you, the focus, I've to, I'm talking about the focus. The focus is God, but the person receiving this money is like when you go to a bank, you want to write to nation media or you want to give a tax to the government. You are not going to give KRA direct. You are going to a bank, national bank, deposit this money so which means 
on you are the person who is handling this money is a national bank teller but the check is in the name so one thing is the same like god there is no bank account that is saying to god or heaven no the account that is the focus is god but the handler is your church the focus is god and the handler is your pastor so the focus is god that is why i'm talking about two focuses of giving two focus two their focus there is a focus on god they, that is where tithes coming fast fruit coming offerings coming so i put three tithe is yes it's meant for god it is meant for god the bible says in the book of leviticus 27 that all the tithes the fasting all the tithes belong to me all the fast fruit belongs to me they belong to god but they are handled handled by human beings so which means you there is no way you are going to meet god hand in hand and give him 10 at the tithe no you'll not meet him anywhere but you you're going to meet either the church administration you're going to meet your pastor you're going to meet account of it is the bank account of your church that you're going to pay tithe to you are not going to pay tithe to them to, to god directly this you will never find that card so one thing when i want us to understand their tithes yes their first fruits yes their offerings to god so that is focus number one focus number two is man what we call the bible says arms there is when you are giving to a needy person or you are giving to the servants of god so i want you to understand these things there is time that is focusing on god so when you are focusing on god which means there is time these are the first the tenth of everything that you have received the tenth the tenth i know there's a day we are going to talk about the tithes the old testament and the new testament why was i need i know there's been a controversy of what is the tithe what is the was it the old testament or was this the new testament so those are things that we need to understand so because people have been asking a question why tithe in the new testament where did jesus talk about? so these are things that we need to understand because the tithes this is the tenth of everything that you have received that is yours which means if you have been doing business a profit you get 10 percent and give it as a tithe the profit not not after return you must calculate and know what is my profit so after that profit you give 10 and then the remaining belongs to you so all this the first fruit if you began something you began you began doing business the first fruit it means the first the first product that you get the first profit you need to give a percentage which probably there are some uh people which are saying 22 percent 12 percent but they are variables so one thing is the first fruit the first profit that you make from the business the first one you get a percentage probably not not whole not the whole amount no there is a percentage that you give as the first fruit offerings this is thanksgiving when we are talking about thanksgiving we are very much clear we are very much clear okay here we are talking about vows there are people offering is this in the old testament we used to look at it in a clear context because in the old testament people used to go and sacrifice nowadays there is no sacrifice which means we don't do sacrificing but in the Old Testament, we used to do all this because there were offerings. And uh, <clears throat> these offerings were done. They, and I, I want to give you some examples. And some examples was Jacob. In the book of uh, Genesis chapter 28, verse 20, Jacob, when he saw a dream and he talked about God, he told God, God, when I go to my uncle and you bless me, and when I come back here, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you, which means this is a vow. This is, when he came back, he did sacrifice. He did a very clear sacrifice. When we are talking about Judges, chapter number 11, there was a person called Jephthah. Judges, chapter number 11, from verse 30 to verse 31. Jephthah, when he was going to fight, 
he made a vow with God. And he said that, God, when I go and win, when I come back, the first thing that I'm going to meet, I'm going to give you as a, as a thanksgiving, as an offering. And when he came back, it is his daughter that met him. And he cried, but he gave her. He gave her as a thanksgiving before God. When we are talking about for Penina, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 1, verse number 11, when Penina made a vow, she was crying. She cried before, before the, 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 the prophet, the, before the servant of God. And she cried. She cried very clearly. She cried before Eli. And she made a vow before God and said, God, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. If you give me a son. And that is where Samuel came from. It is a vow, thanksgiving. Which means there is something that you are giving. Uh, Paul in the book of Acts chapter 18. So they are vows. They are thanksgiving. Another thing, there is a thanksgiving that I want to talk about. That is very much important tonight. That is in the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter number 3. There was a guy who was called Solomon. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 3. From verse number 3. The Bible says, and because Solomon loved the Lord, he went and sacrificed a thousand, a thousand bulls, a thousand bulls. This was, imagine somebody can take 1,000 bulls just to go and sacrifice them to God. Which means, when we were talking about all these sacrifices, there were, there, there were, there are some parts of the sacrifices that were supposed to be eaten by the Levites. And the priest. So he was not considering. So here when I'm talking about the focus of giving. I'm talking about the focus of God. You are giving to a human being. But your focus is God. So you don't hear. The person that is receiving is non-entity. You are not. It's like you want to pay somebody in a bank account. You have written a check to that person. But the person who is handling this. You have no problem with them. Wherever they have, whatever, even if they steal that money, only that they have written this person, this money has been received. So it is like a bank. If a bank has received a money that you are depositing in another person's account and then is stolen by the bankers, it is not you who is going to pay. It is the bankers, the bank that is going to, is going to be liable. It's the same. So when I'm talking about two focuses, I'm talking about you focusing on God. But the person who is handling this is a man. So that is one thing that Solomon, the Bible says, Solomon loved the Lord and he sacrificed a thousand bulls to the Lord. And just because he loved him, just because of love, I just love God, I would like it. So there is an offering. You are offering just because you love God. You can give, you just give, you go and give an offering, not for church, not for anything but for the purpose of God. Also, I'm talking about focusing on God, on anything, project that is running in church. It is not a human project, it's God's project. So you just give money for the sake of that project. So then we are talking about man. You are providing for the needy. That is also giving, providing for the needy. Poor orphans, James chapter number one, verse number 27, the Bible says the only religion, the true religion that I, 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 I am focusing on is this, that you visit, you give to the poor, you give to the widow. So when we are looking at all this, it is very much important. And then servants of God. Servants of God. I just want to go through, but I want us one time to come and talk about this, only on this, when we are going to talk about giving so that we may understand it very thoroughly so but these are also the access for financial growth so when we move to the next level i want us to look at saving saving is important what is saving saving refer to money you put aside for future use rather than spending it immediately so process of setting aside a portion of current income for future use it is setting setting aside for future use rather than spending it so this is one thing that our people don't understand. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. There is a store of great value in the house of the wise. There is a store of great value in the house of the wise. But it is, but it is the wasting, the wasted by the foolish man. 
but it it is wasted by the foolish man so when you look at this please go and read the book of proverbs chapter number four chapter number six from verse six uh, the bible is talking about slugger the person who is not saving luke chapter 15 verse 4 when we are talking about the prodigal son we have looked at the prodigal son in the context of coming back but we have never looked at the prodigal son in the context of he spent it all he spent it all if his father spent it all what would have he received because it was his father who had to save so that he may get but him he takes it and spend it all instead of investing it instead of utilizing it very well he spent it all which means the prodigal yes i know we like the prodigal son in the context of coming back but have we ever looked at it at this prodigal son that if his father was not saving what would have he gotten if his father would have not invested what would have he gotten and the last thing he went took everything and spent it all never saved never invested and that is why he came back and this is the problem because he came back with nothing also to take to eat what his father has also saved so that, those are things that we need to look at because it is much important for us as christians because christians think that saving is a dangerous no the purpose of savings saving money demonstrate good stewardship of the resources god has given us because some people are saying that i cannot save no we save to demonstrate good stewardship of the resources god has given us nowadays we have a lot of chamas we allow a lot of uh, uh, we have a lot of circles circle society and this is why you look you you see that a lot of spiritual people are dying poor because they don't know how to save because they use the notion where they think they say that saving you can't save because God is going because the Bible says in the book of Luke God knows what you need tomorrow so he's going to supply but the Bible says a uh, wise man will leave inheritance to his children children his children children if you are not if you are not going to leave inheritance to your children's children and you don't save today so when are you going to save? Because you got, God knows, yes, God knows that you're going to have grandchildren. But if you don't save today, what are you going to leave for your children's children? What? So these are things that we must understand. Saving money allows us to be prepared for the future. Allow you to be prepared for the future. And sometimes you are a young man who is born again. You want to get married. And when you want to get, you know very clearly that I'm working and I'm going to get married in 2022. You should start saving today because the problem is you are eating everything today, but you know I want to get married in 2022 and you know you want to have a child in 2023. Why don't you prepare? And the insurance are here. So you be prepared. Not that you are helping God. No, but one thing is that you are prepared to help. So you are preparing for the future. You are preparing for your wedding. You are preparing for everything. And these are things that we need to understand at a point in time. That we need to be prepared. So, serving help us to demonstrate good stewardship. Good stewardship. Number four, investing. This is a very clear thing that I want us to understand. What is investing? Investing is putting money into financial schemes shares property or commercial ventures with the expectation to achieve a profit yes i want us to read these verses please ecclesiastic chapter number 11 verse 1 to verse 6 please listen to this the bible says cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days cast cast is put 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 strategically give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou dost not know what evil shall be upon the earth. Uh, people who have done uh, uh, economics, who have been teaching about investments, they've been talking about seven, seven areas of investing, investing in seven areas. And I think I'm, I'm not going to go that, but I want you to pick from the Bible. Give a portion to seven and to eight, for thou knowest. And verse number four, the Bible says, if 
the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. I want you to understand that verse very clearly. He that observeth, a person who is observing the wind shall not sow, but he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. Why? Because you are focusing on, you are not investing. As thou knowest, the Bible says, as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with a child. Even so, the, he, thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. Why? Why did Solomon put this? Because God knows. If you invest in this, you invest in, God knows because when you are investing, you are investing with the wisdom of God. You are investing with the spirit of God. You are investing with the wisdom that is of God. So in the morning, sow thy seed. What do, why, do, why is Solomon using sow? Which means, which means you, are the, you have the intention of getting a harvest. And in the evening, withhold not thy hand. Which means in the morning, do something. In the evening, do something. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper. Either this or that. Or whether they both shall be alike. Good. So these are, please go and read this Bible, this verse, this verse is in different translation. There, there is a translation, ESV, I think it's ESV, it's talking about go and invest. There are, verse, there are translations that is telling you directly, go and invest. Go and invest in seven ventures. There is a uh, translation that is talking about that. So please, we need to do that because investment is very much. Proverbs 7 by 11, verse 23 to verse 28. Please, I want you to, I want us to read this. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is only wrath. The, here we begin with the heart. When you are investing, the heart talks a lot. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 4, verse 12, that the work, the the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword, because it discerneth the intentions of the heart of the man. So before you invest your heart, there is him that scattereth and yet increaseth. Scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. I want you to read that verse. There is a person who is scattering. Which means there is a person who is investing, but he keeps on increasing. But there is a person who is withholding, but the, he ends up up poor. Like the most poor people don't invest. They withhold. But there is a person who is scattering, who is investing. He increases. The Bible says the liberal soul shall be made fat. The liberal soul shall be made fat. But he that watereth shall be watered also himself. If you water, if you invest, people are going to invest in you. If you give, it shall be given back. Which means when you release, people are going to release towards you. But when we withhold, nobody also, because it is a spiritual law. When you give, people will give. When you invest, people will be investing in you. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. If you have something that you, do, you should be, with, if you withhold something that you have, people shall curse you. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. The Bible is talking about selling, which means releasing for an exchange of value. So when you look at this, it is very much important for us to understand that all this is important. Please let us understand this because it is important. It is very much important for us to understand this because he that diligent. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But the blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come upon him. So if you are investing to destroy other people, I'm telling you the problem, you are going to get the destruction by yourself. He that trusts in the riches, in his riches shall fall. 
but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. So this thing, I want you to, to understand. The intention here, the Bible is talking about investing, but the Bible picks about the intention. What is the heart? What is it that makes you release? What is it that makes you, are you capitalizing on other people? Are you, please, this is something that we need to understand. Matthew chapter 25, verse 27, Jesus was talking about this, and he said very clearly, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse number 19 to 20, please go and read these verses, because they, I told you, I am, first of all, I am picking it in the clear context, the biblical context. I want you to give you Bible verses, because this is going to help you, that is going to make you have a heart that investment is not demonic investment is not unbiblical the bible encourages us to invest when you read the book of matthew chapter 25 jesus was giving talents and the person whom he gave and did not bring back he said you would have given me my money i have give, i would have given them to the bank which means i would have invested with the bank and when i was coming the bank would have given me with a profit Jesus mentioned this in the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse number 27. He said, if I, I gave you and you did, you did not bring anything, you are wicked and you are very foolish. So which means I would have taken my own, I would have given to the bank, and the bank would have invested it as I have invested in the bank. And when I come, I get it with a profit. So please understand this. Deuteronomy chapter 23 is also talking about invest. Do not lend. The 23 verse 19 is talking about lending. If you are lending to you, the people of your own, the people who are within, who are born again, you don't ask for profit. But when you are lending it to people who are not, born, who are not of your own, who are not Israelites, you ask for a credit. And this I'm see, I'm, I've seen a lot of Muslims. They are Muslim banks that don't ask for, 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 they don't ask for profits. But Christians, sometimes we learn so that we may, I can borrow even a, you borrow a person that you know that is born again, you know they are very well, and then you say, tomorrow bring 30%. That is the, a very unbiblical, because the Bible says, if you're borrowing, there is, diff, there is a difference between investing and borrowing. Borrowing is giving somebody that is going to bring back. Investing is so that you are, make, you are sending your money to bring return. So you must understand. Please, let us understand these things because it's going to help us to move to the next level. Because if we can't, it's going to be a problem. So when you look at this, you have to understand. And I want you to look at where you are. When we're talking about uh, earning income, I want you to understand. This I picked from uh, Bishop Olumide Emmanuel. And I don't want to go further. I just want to go to, uh, to, to, to an, from this. He, he's talking about three sources of income because this is one thing that we were looking at. Income. He's talking about one-time stream of income. They, he was talking about streams. One-time stream of income. It means that you work and get returns. Work once, get money once. Stop work and stop getting money. Job, work, sales, where you work. So all this is, when you work per month, that month you are given them at the end of the month. If you sell something, you get. That is what we call one-time stream of income, which means you work and you get the, the, the income. You work and you get the income. That is what we call earned income. So one thing I want you to understand, when you're talking about income, there is one and income, which means this is an income that you must work for it in order for you to get it. There's another one called passive income. Once and always, Bishop Lumide Emmanuel says, once and always. You work once, but always making money always. This is intellectual property, CD, books, and songs. So it means that this, when you write a book today, is going to continue to sell, sell, continue to sell. It is something that is going to continue to sell. Like I was buying a book the other time, uh, it was two years ago, a book that was written by Napoleon Hill so many years ago. This book has been so much, it has been good. 
which means there is a book I bought about by, by authored by the late Dr. Maurice Monroe the other day. So when you look at you buy it, this guy wrote this book once, but it is bringing money always. You do it once, but so Bishop Olumedio calls it passive income. You work once, but always making money from it. This is, is talking about intellectual property. This, there is a guy who's played a CD once, but he's still earning from them. Musicians, they played once, but they're still earning from those mu music. There's a person who authored a book once, you wrote a CD, you, you, you made a CD once and you're still getting money out of it. You made a movie once and your, your movie is still selling continuously. You wrote a book, so it is once and always. Like, for example, like when we are looking at the issue of, uh, the issue of you have a rental houses, not a real estate, but a rental houses, because a real estate, you have a rental houses, you build the house once, and then they, they keep on. Then we, what, we have what we call portfolio income, that is free flow. You don't work, but your money is working for you. So you go and do real estate agency and these things. So the money is working for you. You are not working for money. So when you look at this, it is you sending the money to go and work for you. So these are things that we need to understand as Christians. Because for us to move to the next level, these are terminologies that we need to understand. Because the Bible is also has given us. The Bible, I want you to read the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28. Because for us to understand what we are talking about here, I know that we have claimed so much. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28, I want you to read it keenly from verse 1 to verse number 14. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. I want you to start listening to this. And the, um, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall thou be in the city. Please listen to this. Blessed shall thou be in the city, which means you are going to be blessed in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field, which means you are not going, you don't need to be in the city to work in the city. But which means you are going to probably in the village, but your money is doing some job for you in the city. Which means you cannot be in two places. No. So you look at this and he says that when you look at this, it's very much powerful. He says very clear, blessed shall thou be in the city and shall be also in the field. Which means there is an investment. This person has a field. And this person is also having, having some hand in the city. Blessed shall be in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground. What is the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of the increase of your kind, the flock of your sheep. So when we're looking at it, look at this. This is not a person who has been employed. This is a person that is moving. This is a person that has, please let us understand Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because this is not a person who is walking hand to mouth. No. Blessed thy shall be thy basket and your store. Which means this person has a store. We were reading in the book of Proverbs 21, where the Bible says the store, this, person is a, this person has a store. But the problem is we are believing in from hand to mouth. You don't have enough a store. You don't even have what to give. You want to be given every in every particular time. No. The Bible says, verse 6, Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and when thou shalt be going out. Which means you are coming, in, wherever you come in a place, you are blessed. Wherever you go out of a place, which means, which means you are a walking blessing. You go in somewhere, people are blessed, and you are also blessed. Which means you are a walking investor. You are a, you are a person who, because when you come in, you are blessed. When you go out, you are blessed. The, verse number seven, the Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise again. And that rise against you. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise against thee to be smitten before thy face. Who is going to smite them? To be smitten by who? 
they shall come out against thee in one way and flee before the seven weeks. So all they shall be smitten, which means there is something that is going to help you to do this. So when you look at this, it is something that when we look at it, please go and read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Thou shall be, the Bible says verse 9, the Lord shall establish thee in a holy people, a holy people unto himself, and he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep these commandments. And verse number 10, and all the people of the heart shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. You are called by the name of the Lord because of all these things that are happening in your life. And the, so the Lord shall make you, please listen to verse number 11. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Plen plenteous in goods. In the fruit of your body. In the fruit of your cattle. In the fruit of your ground. In the land which the Lord has sold unto thy fathers to give you. So all this, when we look at this, is this... What do, you, what do you think God is talking about? Is God is talking about an employee here? Do you think God is talking about an employee here? Do you think God is talking about a person who is living from hand to mouth? Do you think God is talking about an investor here? God is talking about, about a business person. A person who is not doing a one-time stream of income. No. God is talking about a person who is, is doing once and always. And God is talking about a person who is having a free flow. A portfolio income. Oh, thank you. This is a person who is dealing with portfolio income, which means not, oh my God, I thank God because of this revelation. And I am asking every young person who is listening to me, because these things are things that I learned later. When I got born again, I was told that blessed are the poor because they shall see God. No, the Bible says blessed are the poor in spirit, not poor. Because we have been made to believe that you must be poor to see God. No. No, 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 no. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Not poor, in, not poor financially. No, no, not poor financially. The Bible says in the book of <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 8, the Bible says, by the grace of God, because God, Jesus, was rich, he became poor so that we may be rich. Oh my God, please read the Bible, read the Bible, because we have been made to believe. When I got born again, I knew, and I, please, I could defend it, that blessed are the poor, but I did not know poor in spirit. Poor in spirit, blessed are the poor in spirit. Because they shall see God. The poor in spirit. If God has promised, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to verse 14, God has promised this to the Israelites, to the children of Israel. And he told them, you shall be having free flow income. Not one time stream, no. Not once and always, no. You shall be having a free flow. Which means you shall be having portfolio income. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the village. You have a ranch. You are having business. You or your cattle is doing good. Because by that time, it was cattle. We did not have hardwares in that time. And this time, we had hard hardwares. They were not having banks that time. But this time, we are having banks. If churches, a church does not allow you to open a bank account, but a church is having a bank account, that is a double standard. So these are things that we need to understand because every young people, every young person that is listening to me, because I, I read the book of Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad and the Poor Dad, and he was trying to explain because this is the mentality that we have been living with. We have been going to school because we want to get up a nice job. We want, but one thing I want us to understand, God has created us. Because look at Abraham. Where was Abraham a one-time stream income? No. Abraham could take people, the servants, and go and rescue kingdom. Is that person who is coming in one stream? Abraham had no child, but could could go in the book of in the book of Genesis chapter number fourteen. Abraham was the first person to give a tithe, a tithe of all. After he went to rescue two kingdoms, Sodom, because of his, this is his nephew. 
So one thing I want you to understand, please, who is listening to me? Was Abraham a person who was working on one time stream income? No. Was Isaac working on one time stream income? No. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 28, you realize that even the king, the king, the king, the king said, Isaac, move away from us because you are greater than us. You are greater than a kingdom. Abraham was greater than a kingdom. Isaac was greater than a kingdom. That is a free flow. That is not a one-time stream of income. It was a free flow. Please go and read this Bible. Because the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 14 is talking about how Abraham took his servants. Do you have servants if you are working, you are a servant of... A lot of Christians nowadays are the people who are servants. We are working. A lot of Christians are working. Maids, you, me, me. We are serving other people instead of us having. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, you shall be, you shall be the head and not the tail. You cannot be the head if you don't you you if you cannot manage anything. No, you cannot be the head. So one thing I want us to understand is that the Bible declares it very clearly. And clearly, we need to move from. I like Jacob. Jacob, there is a way that he walked to, uh, to, to his uncle. But he moved, went. The Bible says God blessed Jacob very much that he had servants. He had servants. Why? We always think that God wants us to be poor so that we may reach heaven. No. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit because they shall see God. B poor in spirit, spiritual poverty, which means you are hungry for God. You are hungry for God. Your heart is yearning for God. Your heart is moving towards God. And these are things that we need to understand. So please, tonight, I want you to look at yourself and I want you to ask yourself, am I working on an one-time stream of income? Where if I don't work, okay, go and check. right now, Corona is doing a lot of problems because you are not going to work. Ever since Corona was, you are not going to work because you are a one-time stream of income person. But one thing I want you to understand, please, you would have moved to once and once and always. There are people who did something and now is still bringing some money. Then there are people who are working on portfolio income. They are free flow. This guy is sleeping until 10. He's doing something, but they, they, he sent his money to bring money to him. He sent his money to work for him. You must be paid to work. But this person is giving money so that you may work. I always tell people, I always give an, an example. There is a person who has sent his money, and this money makes you wake up at 5, so that you're going to go to do the work, so that after the end, end of the month, he's going to give you money. But there's a person who has sent that money for you so that you may work. So your life is ordered by somebody's life. And this is one thing I want us to understand. I want us to go and read the book of the late Dr. Miles Monroe. The Bible, the, is, he wrote a book called The Burden of Freedom. The Burden of Freedom. Where you can manage your life. You can manage your time. You can decide for yourself. Because when you are doing a one-time stream, which means you are managed. But when you are in a free flow, you must, for you to move to free flow, you must know how to manage yourself. You must know how to manage your life. You must know how to manage your time because that is the most important. You must know how to manage everything that you have because without that, you cannot do anything. I when when somebody, Robert Kiyosaki was, I borrowed this from Robert Kiyosaki and he was talking about e, uh, EBSR and please go and read that book. I, I, I please, I, I would like to recommend some books to you, but uh, Robert Kiyosaki was saying, if you are employed, you have a job. This means you work for money. If you are self-employed, you own a job. This means that you have employed yourself. If you have, you have a business, you have people working for you. 
And if you are an investor, which means your money is working for you. So I want you to look at the category because people can move. You can move to unemployed, you move to self-employed, self-employed, you go to your own business and then you become an investor because you can, after you have understood your management. I picked this from Robert Kiyosaki book, Poor Dad, Read Dad, Poor Dad. And this means that if E is, this means you are employed, you are working for money. S, this means that you are self-employed. This means that you are self-employed. You have your own job. The job is yours. If you go to B, you have a business, you own a business, you have people working for you. And when you go to I, it is an investor, which means your money is working for you. So please let us understand this matrix. And I would like to recommend books for you. I want you to please, if you can, I have given you the biblical site, but you can do go and read other books. Uh, I recommended some two books by one Rabbi Daniel Lapin. He, he has written 10 commandments, 10 commandments of money, the 10 commandments. Please go look for that book, read it. The School of Money by Bishop Ulumide Emmanuel. I am giving you books that I know these guys have. They are born again because Bishop Ulumide, I know him. I know him and I know that he is a person I've looked at. So he has written a book. He has written a book called The School of Money. Look at it, please. Read it. Rabbi Daniel Lapin, he has written a very good book. Please go and read this book. And other books of people like uh, Robert Kiyosaki has written a series. Read that, who are that series. Please go and read because it is going to ch just give you a glimpse of how to think of, of these things. And for young people, I think basically, because when I was growing up, I was told exactly what was happening with the Robert Kiyosaki's issue. And when I was growing up, I was growing up when I knew that a poor person is the person who is going to enter, enter heaven. And in fact, that I knew, being that I'm poor, I have qualified myself. I am qualified, overqualified to enter heaven. But when I came to, and when I got born again, I realized that now I am now. Because I was poor, I was a candidate to heaven. Now I'm born again, I'm going to straight to heaven. But when I started reading the Bible, and I was challenged by the Bible, I came to realize that the Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 6, he's, Timothy, Paul is talking to Timothy. He's telling him, please, I want you to talk to the rich who are among you, that they should, they should not... They should, not, they, they should not put weighty measure on the riches. But there's no problem if they are rich. So that is one thing that I want us to understand. So this night, as I close, I don't want to talk much, but I believe that I don't want to, because I'm going to talk about, we are going to have subject on giving alone. Giving to God alone, giving to man alone. Because these are things that giving is very much important for us to understand because it's going to be a blessing for us to give. I will tell I told people, Solomon gave and God visited him. The book of First Kings chapter number three, he only gave a thousand bulls and God visited him. God, God did not send any person. He never went, he, by then Sol, Solomon never went to pray. He went, I just gave a thousand bulls, sacrificed them at Gibeon. He sacrificed one thousand bulls and God visited, God came at night. And asked, why? That 1,000. Why? So sometimes also, when we look at giving to the servants of God, when we look at the woman, the, the, the widow at Zarephath, when we look at the Shunammite woman in the book of 2 Kings chapter number, I think chapter number 4 or chapter number 6, when we look at the book of 1 Kings chapter number 17, the widow at Zarephath that gave Elijah some food so that she, she stayed with with the food for three and a half years in famine. When we are looking at the widow who in the book of Second Kings that gave Elisha food, that is giving to the servants of God. So there is giving to God, there is giving to the servants of God. Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter number four, he says, I think from verse number 15, he said that you Philippians know that from the time I came from, it is you who has 
who has talked with me concerning giving and receiving except you only. You have given to me not because I have need, no, but you have given to me so that you may receive the blessing on your own. So all these things are biblical because I know this is a topic of its own, but it is worthwhile. So as I've been talking about financial, I don't want to talk about much because there's a day that we are going to specifically deal with the issue of giving, specifically on giving because it's going to give us a blessing and a way ahead. So this night, I just want to thank you and I just want to honor you. And I pray the Lord as you watch this, please, 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 investment is for the kingdom of God. The Bible says in the, I know some people don't save because of the book of Matthew chapter number six, I think verse number 19 or something, where the Bible says invest in the kingdom of God. And I want to ask you, please, if there is an account, if you have account, if you have a bank that is receiving money that is going directly to heaven, please bring it to me because I'm also, I would like also to invest in heaven. If you have an account that money is being deposited, and if you have, please, I would like to write a check. Even if I don't have a, a bank account, I'm going to buy. Please. Because there is no way you are going to invest, invest in heaven if you are not investing in human beings. John told us in the book of us, John, if you think that you love God and you hate your enemy, you don't love God. You love God by loving your enemy. You help the, the neighbor so that you may invest in heaven. So heaven is next to you. So for you to invest in heaven is you invest in your neighbor. For you to invest in heaven, you invest in the needy. For you to invest in heaven, you invest in programs. For you to invest in heaven, you invest in the person who is lacking. So please, I know that people say, I cannot invest because I want to invest in heaven. Please, I would like you also to help me with that account. Because even me, I would like to invest in that heaven. Please, give me that account because the contacts are here. Please write, write me an email at info. Info. <laughs> at divineseekers.org. Please write me, give me that account so that even me, I would like to invest in heaven directly the way you say. Because if you can't invest in your neighbor, please, you're not investing in heaven. Leave your investment somewhere. So tonight as I close, I don't want to talk much because I've taken a lot of your time, but as I close, please, I'll close the issue of uh, uh, financial increase, uh, financial uh, growth, but all these are what we have to understand before we move to the next level. But tomorrow also in the morning on Saturday, we are going to have what we call intellectual growth. Please be prepared so that tomorrow we meet. Let me pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you tonight because you're the King of glory. I just want to thank you because of the viewer. I just want to thank you because of the listener. And I pray the Lord tonight, may you provide for them. May you bless them. May you anoint them. May you be glorified upon their life because you're the King of glory. I worship you tonight because you are, Lord, you are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the blessings. And I pray the Lord, may you just reign upon their life. Lord, I pray for every person who would like to be born again tonight. That Lord wants to change their mind. The person who is listening to me, who has been a con man, I pray the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, may they change. The person who has been Lord, been stealing from other people. The person who has been greedy for wealth. Lord, the Bible says that you, the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two double-edged sword. That Lord, it penetrates. Even it breaks asunder all the bone and the marrow. This and it also it is a discerner of the intents and the thoughts of the heart of the man. I pray the Lord, let your word discern the thoughts and the intents of them. That Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, they are going to change their mind rather than stealing, rather than conning, rather than robbing. Lord, tonight they are going to change and work with their hands so that they may become a blessing to other people. Tonight, Lord, I pray the Lord, may, may you transform their life. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that Lord, you're going to destroy their family, their house of the person who is stealing, the person that is robbing, the person that is stealing, the person, Lord, you're going to destroy their houses. And I pray the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, because you love them, 
Lord, may you transform their lives. May you change their life, Lord. I pray the Lord, may I pray for any person who is listening to me and who is watching this, Lord. I pray the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit that is convicting, convict them. Let your Holy Spirit that is going to lead, to lead them. Let your Holy Spirit that is directing, to direct them. Let your Holy Spirit that is going to give revelation, to give them revelation. This night, I worship you and I honor you. And I pray the Lord, may you save them that are not saved. The person who is not born again, I pray for your conviction that, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, may you convict them tonight. May you bless them tonight. May you anoint them tonight. May you be glorified them tonight because tonight you are the king of glory. You are the Lord of honor. You are the first and the last and you are the beginning and the end. All this I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. May God bless you. May God anoint you. May God take care of you. And more than anything else, may God cover you tonight. On also those people who are sick, Lord, just heal them tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.